kind of love the music, man. Everything going good on this year, whatever day it is, Wednesday. Um, other than me, I'm a white and sniveling bitch. Uh, <laughs> uh, crap. It's cleanup tool day. I don't know if you guys seen all my posts, but I don't know. Can, it, can you see it way over there? Will it show it over there? I don't know. Is that showing it? All them parts over there? It's all the table saw. Or parts to the table saw. And they all got cleaned and de rust and scrubbed and rubbed down with all kinds of cleaners and de rusters because keep saying it's old and I mean it is old but I don't think it's as old as he thinks it is because he was saying it was old when he got it 15 20 years ago but uh it's all metric so I'm thinking 99 2000 at the earliest is when they went metric it's a grass I mean it's halfway decent table saw for what it is I, it, there's stuff like the tilt mechanism is just it's too flimsy. It relies on the side of the sheet metal case, and it's just too flimsy. It needs to be beefed up. We've always had a problem with that. But, I mean, if you lock it down, it's all right. It's not reliable. But I think I'm going to con somebody and one of my brothers to get me one of those little, I don't know if you see them, little digital square um, angle, digital angle guides, whatever they call them. Little box is about like that big, and uh, they have a magnet on them and a digital guide. And you center it, you level it on the table, and hit zero, and then you put stick it on the blade. It's you know magnetic, so it sticks on the blade, and you tilt the blade, and the digital readout tells you when you're at 45. Um, which would be nice because with the way those Sears ones work, it never reads the same again because the uh, you know, the blade will go, but it won't read the same necessarily because the flex of the whole body, because it's a sheet metal, crappy, thin support. And there's a bunch of fixes. I just haven't decided how I want to go about it. But first off, everything needs a bath because they're all covered in, like, slime. All my drills and tools and all my wire wheels. This was silver once. It's, like, pure silver. It's all got rust and uh, PB blaster and whatever else on it. So the first thing we do is we take the wiry, brushy stuff, which you can't see. There you go. Can you see it now? There you go, my bucket of wiry, brushy stuff. And the drill. This thing's all freaking slimy and greasy. I've had this drill for years. And it's always been clean until this week. <laughs> it looked almost brand new until this week. I've always taken care of this one. But, you know, work must be done. Uh, stuff's got to be done. And we stick it all in here. And this is the ultimate degreaser cleaner. I love this stuff. I thin it out a little bit. Let's just pour a little in there. <laughs> Soak into the bristles. Then, believe it or not, you add some 90% rubbing alcohol, which actually just thins it. Because this stuff's kind of um, thick. It's like slimy thick. So you mix a bunch of rubbing alcohol into it. Usually about 50-50. <laughs> if I think I want a little more orange clean in. Agitate a little, mix it up. Try not to get it on my computer and everything. I actually used to use this. I came up with this one. Uh, I used to use it to strip bike chains. And it works smashingly. Any orange clean, it doesn't have... Well, of course I get it on the computer. Um, on the laptop. You don't have to use the Zep, any of the good orange cleans. You just let it soak down there. And of course, I got to wipe up the orange clean off the computer. Well, it's clean. 
basically I gotta coat this top too. This hasn't been coated yet. It's still raw oak. Of course now I got some splatters on it. And uh I'll stain it because I haven't polyurethane it. Bob! Happy birthday, Bob! Cake day! It's Bob's cake day! Everybody say happy birthday to Bob. Bob's birthday. Hey Bob, it's your birthday. It's Bob's birthday. It's Bob's birthday. I'll stop singing. That's just terrible. <laughs> you don't want to hear me sing, even if it is for a good thing. Yeah, any of those work. I just find this stuff. I get it at Lowe's. I I literally bought this, like, this gallon. I mean, literally this gallon, like, I don't know, probably 10 years ago. This is how long it lasts because I always mix it down. It just works really well. We used to use it in the schools. When I used to work at the schools, here, we're talking 90s, late, actually late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, mid, or mid early 90s, I guess it was. Anyway, it's a long time ago. Um, we used to use this because we stripped floors with it. <laughs> Strip the wax off the floors. It works really good. Um, it is a little greasy feeling. It's so it's concentrated, semi concentrated. Um, heavy duty citrus decrease. For any of the citrus ones, I just like the citrus because they don't harm anything. You're all done with it. You can literally go like throw it out in the yard and it's not going to like kill your grass or. Um, I'm sort of watching YouTube chat. Why? I'm just watching, uh, the, the, uh, StreamYard chat. <laughs> Link in the description, right? Link in the description for what? <laughs> Normal. Is that? Oh, I just get it at Lowe's. I go to Lowe's and buy it. I think Home Depot carries it too. I think they both carries that. Zip used to be a commercial only brand a billion years ago, if I remember correctly. But we used to use it in the schools because it was ridiculously cheap. But I've been using it for years. I actually take old rubbing alcohol and it gets about halfway down. I just fill it back up with uh, orange cream. I just did. I just refilled this one. This is old too. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then when you're all done, because it does leave a. Uh, Kind of a slimy coat, even mixed with rubbing alcohol, much less of a slimy coat. But I uh, hit it with Windex after. And those tools, I'll just let them soak. I'll take them outside, like cover my face and everything. What's up, Ann? And uh, Brian! What is up, Brian? Come over to the Twitch side, Brian. I should put a banner up. I know I'm broadcasting to both, but everyone needs to go over to the Twitchy Twitch. It's Tom Lamo Makes on Twitch. Just because. I'm only going to do the YouTube till they catch me. I don't know if you guys realize, but Twitch gets upset if you multi-stream at the same time. You can stream on Twitch, and then when you're done, save the stream and then upload it to YouTube, and they don't care. But if you uh, multi-stream, Twitch can get upset and may not pay you. But they're not paying me anyway, so because I don't make enough money every month, so they don't pay, which is kind of ass backwards, but. I mean, I still get it if they have a minimum output of a hundred bucks. So if you haven't made a hundred bucks, you don't get paid. Which I never, I don't stream enough. Oh crap! It's Bob's birthday. It's Bob's birthday. Everyone say happy birthday to Bob. Yeah, I'm actually not a super fan of Twitch. I still like Facebook or uh, YouTube better. The problem is, is I can't get paid on YouTube because I don't stream enough and I don't have enough followers and all that. And I'm not out to do this to make money, but I'm out to do it to um, pay for itself. I would like my streaming to pay for itself. So if I can make 15 or 20 bucks a month on Twitch to pay for StreamYard, I will use Twitch. I mean, I don't, for what I do, I don't really care. I do prefer YouTube. I'm sorry, the more I use Twitch, the more I prefer YouTube. I do. I'm sorry, I just do. But Twitch pays, YouTube doesn't. 
for the smaller people. Someone like me, someone like Brian, Mr. Vines, the hairy Brian, <laughs> um, dude, your hair's getting really long. Um, yeah, YouTube's better. If I can hit that thousand followers, where I could, you know, actually start collecting money, but they're, they're, the requirements on YouTube are just too high. You can't, it's hard to get started these days. You know, when, if I'd have really pushed it years ago when I first started on YouTube, I'd probably be all right, but I never really pushed it. And I'm not reliable enough. You know, I don't do a video every week or every two weeks or three times a week or whatever they want. <laughs> now they're pushing the shorts. <clears throat> I'm feeling better. Yeah, I mean, my legs still bother me, but that, I have a feeling that's never ever going to go away again. I think I've pretty much permanently screwed my leg up. Without a knee replacement, it ain't never going to go away. And I'm not getting a knee replacement anytime soon because I simply can't afford it. So there's that. Welcome to America, freaking healthcare. Best healthcare in the world as long as you're freaking. A millionaire. I should probably take the battery out where I'm rubbing liquids all over my drill. Clean the drill off anyways. Yeah, dad jokes in the house. There you go. The king of dad jokes, Mr. Brian Vines. I haven't seen Brian on a stream in a while. You must be home sick or something. You got to go to work soon, don't you? Or at work or working from home or I don't even know what you're doing anymore. I mean, I know what you do. But a lot of your stuff you can actually do from home, can't you, Barry? Must get grease off. Normally, I wouldn't care about getting the grease off as much. But now that I'm working on, uh, like, cutting boards, um, I don't want... To contaminate them. Not that I will, because honestly, I never use these particular tools on the cutting boards, as they're kind of overkill. I use those right there, right there. That's what I mostly use on the cutting boards. It's called the 12 volt Milwaukee. I don't really use the 18 that much, because it's just too. It's too much. It's too much power. I really don't need it. But this works pretty well. I mean, the button's pretty clean. And that button's not. <laughs> oh, I know. Yes, I know video editing takes time, which is why I don't do a lot of it. Dude, I probably... I, I don't know how you pull it off. I literally record videos all the time, especially out here. I usually have my tripod out here and I'm recording. I probably have like eight videos all ready to go. And I just, I start editing and I just get lost. My biggest problem is editing out all my ums. I, I, I um, when I'm recording, I um too much. Um, yeah. And I don't like, you know, once in a while an um's okay, but when it's, I'm going to do this, um, and, uh, then I'm going to do that and, um, um, I can't have that in a pre-recorded edited video. It's just too many ums. And it's literally the first, like, hour of me editing is just me editing out, um. <laughs> um, 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 dumbass. I'm a dumbass. Work life, no time to finish recording. Yeah, I just, I mean, I, I don't have the time, but I do. I mean, I really do have the time other than sitting is not easy. I'm having a hard time sitting here today. I've got the seat all the way down. So my feet are a little high. So it's not bothering me like too much. I can feel it, but it's not driving me totally crazy. It does seem to be getting a little bit better, but toothbrush to the battery. <laughs> Most people probably think I'm nuts, but when I clean, I clean. 
Yeah, I know you write scripts too. That, that's I should probably start doing that because I think if I was reading off a script, I would uh, um less. <laughs> but I'm not good at read. I don't read well, and it's not that I can't read. I read fine in the sense of I can read. I can't read out loud. My brain goes faster than the text does. My brain wanders too much while reading. So I don't know if I... I'm going to try... I was thinking about scripting some because I have a couple I want to do. But I really want to do a really nice one out here for uh, 3D printing supporting woodworking, if that makes sense. Because pretty much every tool I have out here has at least one 3D printed item on it. <laughs> and like tons on the walls and all of this stuff is 3D printed brackets. That's 3D printed. That bracket 3D printed. That bracket 3D printed. Everything on the CNC is 3D printed. The dust boot is TPU. Thanks to Bob. It's actually PLA. Excuse me. Thanks to Bob. This is the. This is the. Uh, works really good. Um, Sparta 3D flexible PLA, and I actually like that a lot. Kind of looking to get more because the TPU I used to buy that was cheap is no longer cheap. They've raised the price on it. Not, it's still not extraordinarily expensive, but um, it's still only twenty bucks a roll. But the roll is only a hundred grams. Where I was, you know, I was always finding it on Amazon for teens a roll when I was buying it. It was always on sale for like sixteen for. I, bunch of them I used to get for 14 bucks it would be on sale and uh hasn't been on sale I've been looking because I'm almost out and uh it hasn't been on sale lately so there's that actually looks like a boot oh yeah it kind of does doesn't it it's a booty this boot is made for vacuuming. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing today. I'm cleaning. I'm cleaning stuff while yakking at you guys. Because I don't like greasy, grimy, rusty crap on my tools. Again, normally I wouldn't care if I was still just using these in construction, like on day-to-day -day usage. I always had a rough, heavy-duty set that were for, like, framing, which is what these basically are. And I always had, like, like 12 volts or smaller ones for working in someone's house, which the small ones were always clean and the big ones were always, I didn't care. They just got, at the end of the day, no matter how dirty they were, a lot of times I would blow them off with the air compressor just to get, you know, sawdust out of them. So it's not binding up the motors. But uh, I wouldn't care about scrubbing them like this. But now I'm not working on job sites anymore. And most of what I do is more fine woodworking, I guess you could call it. It's really not, but sure. Um, I just don't want them finding. <laughs> I don't want greasy, grimy fingerprints on my oak. <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding there, Bob. Too bad I'm not actually cleaning up my act. I'm just cleaning up my tool. This can get hung back up, I guess. More, more crap in here. I'm kind of going overkill now, but why not? So what are you doing for your birthday, Bob? Are you going to work today and being a good boy? Are you taking the day off and hanging out with the wife and eating cake? Eat all the cake all day long, Bob. All you can have on your birthday for, for to eat is cake. It's sad I say that because personally I'm not a big cake person. I really don't like cake. I mean, I'll eat it. It's there. You know, I, the cake's all right. My mother used to own a cake baking business. She used to make wedding cakes and 
all kinds of stuff when I was a little, little kid out of the basement. Um, our basement is actually a bakery, or was. It kind of has been converted since. But, um, it's got all the... We had to up our septic system. And it's got all the drains, and we used to actually have a, a restaurant-quality sink in one of those big, you know, restaurant-style dishwashers. That's all gone, but... There used to be a bakery in the basement. She had like four ovens. She did a lot of it. But uh, anytime she failed, we'd get them. <laughs> you know, if a cake fell or we ate them. So we ate a lot of cake. Not that it happened that much, but we ate more cake than most people when I was young. So you kind of like, cake becomes kind of bleh. After you eat that much cake, it's not special anymore. When you, when you end up eating it all the time, you get kind of, it loses its specialty. <laughs> right, that's much cleaner. Come down. Like four more to go. Let's do the little Makita. I like these. Here's the difference. Construction, mid-lightweight stuff. Which is why I originally bought these. There's one problem with this. The only thing I hate about this drill. This whole head and there's no way to tighten it. They keep saying you can fix it and you can't. I've looked into it. Talked to Makita. The only way to fix that is to replace the whole head. And they're like, it'll probably still bobble. <laughs> now, it's not all their fault. I have on this and it's dropped off the roofs and I've actually had this longer than this and they were a lot cheaper because I got this the matching impact because this is smaller it's their compact series or whatever it's not quite as powerful as that they both use the 18 volt battery um, what I do like about it is the batteries last longer with compact because it's not using as much juice um, they're smaller, they're lighter. These were my in-house, you know, like I was saying before, this used to be my in-house clean set. But I got a Sawzall, um, Impact, and the drill for 200 bucks, which was ridiculously cheap at the time. It's still ridiculously cheap. I don't think they continued to make these. They had too many problems with them. Like, this is kind of flimsy. I think it's just too small for the power output because it's still got plenty of power. It's not as powerful as the larger one. Um, at least the impact, I don't know, the drill seems about the same to be honest. Um, this is not a hammer drill and this one is. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if they still make these compacts or not. They are nice. They're smaller and quite a bit lighter. I mean, this is much heavier than this. And there's plenty of there's plenty of power in this. Like the average everyday homeowner, I would recommend getting this <laughs> over this. For one, it's cheaper. Two, it lasts longer, even though the power, hey Rob, um, the power may not be as much. The batteries actually last longer because it's not drawing as much juice all the time. So uh I like them, but I like the impact better. I'm not real fond of this though, be, again, because of this, it's all the head boost. But for a general, everyday drilling, if you're not trying to be stupid, super drill press accurate with it, which is what I do, um, it's not a problem. Most people probably wouldn't even notice that it's not that bad and again it probably wouldn't be that bad if i hadn't dropped this thing a half a dozen times in its life if not more probably a lot more than a half a dozen times <laughs> probably a couple dozen times and it's come off a roof a few times too so yeah I mean, it still works. 
and it's really comfortable to use. The only other thing I don't like about it is it's all black. And I mean, that looks cool, it's all black. But when you're on a job site, I want like bright orange, and bright green, and bright yellow, and bright red. Because <laughs> you set crap down, and then you forget where you set it. And if it's a bright color, you can just look around the property or the job site and find it easier. That was one big mess I made cleaning that table saw. That was one rusty bucket. And I don't even know if it's going to be worth it in the long run, but I just bought new bearings for it, which were, I love this. They're uh, the bearings for two of them, and they're good ones. I didn't just buy Amazon cheapies um, for it are uh, about five bucks a piece. And the shipping is 18 bucks. <laughs> so it's almost, I think it came out like $25 because I had a discount code. I bought the bearings from a place I used to buy all my bearings for my mountain bikes years ago, which have really good quality bearings. I was thinking about getting ceramics for it, but they didn't really have them for it. They have the size that fits, but it's not the right type of bearing or some crap. It's not the right. Neither one of them are angle contact. I want to say angle contact, but they're not. But it's the, the cage or whatever inside the bearing that holds the actual ball separated different. And when I was talking to them, they're like, we're not sure it would last in the table saw like that when you're next to the load. And you're probably actually better off just getting a cheaper one. And boom. I was like, oh, okay. So that's what I did. I got the cheap one. And I paid a ridiculous amount for shipping. Cleaning you know, off the contacts. PB Blaster and Rust makes a big freaking mess. Waiting through the commercials. Yeah, commercials are kind of a thing. They have those on YouTube too. <laughs> they have them everywhere. I don't like them myself. Okay, this one's a little slimy because that was a little bit stronger of a uh, rubbing alcohol. He's going to get uh, some Windex to strip the orange clean off. And a new blue rag that stains. The blue, don't buy these blue rags on Amazon. Not that the rags themselves are a problem. But I will buy them again. They were cheap and it's just a freaking rag. And they're actually good, you know, they're basic shop rags. But uh, these blue ones and the red ones, um, the color dye breaks down to rubbing alcohol, <laughs> which is probably a slight blue tone. I did run these, this particular ones when I found out through the washing machine with some bleach. They were actually a much darker, brighter blue when I first got them. But after I discovered that, it turned my cutting board blue. I always use the rubbing alcohol to raise the grain before the last sanding. And it turned my whole freaking cutting board blue. Just stained the maple and everything. I was really pissed. Took me forever to get all the blue out. Sand it down and replane it. And make sure there was no issues with the food grade of it. Um, yeah. The blue bleeds. And bleeding blue is not good. That thing needs a cleaning. Well, that's really bad. I don't use this one anymore. I use the Milwaukee one more, which is why I use it on this. On the table saw, because I'm not as worried about it. Even though, again, it's way more powerful. It's also not as controlled. And freaking huge! This thing is huge for one of these. Way bigger than any of the other ones I've had. Just, like, the whole body and trying to grip it. Like, I can barely freaking hold it. My hand won't go around it. It's just too big a diameter. <laughs> I love the machine. I mean, it works freaking stupendously. It just 
uncomfortable to hang on to. Um, I'm not a big DeWalt fan for cordless, but either Milwaukee or DeWalt if I were going to buy another one of these. The only reason I bought this one, honestly, I like the DeWalt one a lot. Um, I like the Milwaukee one. The Milwaukee one's the best. They actually had 12 volt Milwaukee one's the best. I take a 12 volt Milwaukee over any of them now. Um, but if you need the higher power and you're not worried about battery branding, the DeWalt is probably the best one in the biggies. I haven't tried the Milwaukee 18 volt. I know the Milwaukee 12 volt smokes all of them. I love it. I actually bought one and it's freaking awesome. Um, I bought it myself for myself for Christmas. Um, this thing has more power, way more power than a DeWalt, but it's just uncomfortable to hold. It's too big in your hand. If you were some kind of monster, you know, nine foot tall monstrosity with 20 inch fingers, it's probably not a problem. But for the average everyday guy, and I got some big guys that would grab this thing and go, that thing's freaking huge to hang on to. I'm like, yeah, isn't it? Though? It's like it's got plenty of balls, does the job, cuts freaking incredible, sands unreal. That's what I use it for now, more than sanding. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's kind of big and heavy. Big and heavy, heavy and big. But I still like it. I still use it. Later, Mr. Vine. Your birthday's coming up in like a month or two, huh? Mm -hmm. I just thought of that. Craig Vine's birthday coming up. He's only like a month away, if I remember correctly. Not that I remember people's birthday, but for some reason I remember it being like early summer. For some reason I remember that. Get all the crap out of all of the joints. Again, normally I wouldn't go this crazy other than now I'm doing more clean work with my tools. And I'm not worried about the tool being actually clean other than I want my hand clean after using it. I don't want to be grabbing a nasty tool and then grab like a cutting board or a bowl or something fancy and then have a greasy fingerprint on it from grabbing the tool. Or what are my clocks? Or something. So I'd like to get all the greasy, uh, greasy grimies off. And then after I finish this, which I'm almost done, because the uh, wire brush stuff's going to soak probably until tomorrow. Because that stuff's really nasty. And I don't feel like putting a freaking Tyvek suit on to clean them. I'm kidding. I don't actually wear Tyvek suit. But I usually get like a towel or something I don't want to throw out. Is what I'll do with the wire wheel. Is I'll put them back on a drill. And uh, just spin them. <laughs> as fast as I can. Which is kind of stupid because I just cleaned the drill. But whatever. Why won't that come off? I think that's old. I think that's actually glue. It is. Polyurethane glue. Never come off again. Let's Windex it. The Windex, believe it or not, strips off the cleaner. <laughs> and leaves it not gummy. I don't know if you ever used any of the good degreasers or anything, but they leave kind of a gummy feel, especially on the rubbery handle grips and stuff. Or if you hit it with Windex, 
it gets rid of that gummy feel that the degreasers leave on the rubber. Window cleaner. Oh, actually, that is Windex. That's an actual real Windex. Look at that. I don't think I ever bought Windex. It must be one of my father's little bottles. <laughs> I doubt it's got Windex in it because I usually buy uh, like Walmart or um, Home Depot or Lowe's. I'll go in and when I know I need window cleaner, I just uh, I buy the gallon jug and refill the spray bottles and until the spray heads don't work anymore. All right, that's pretty clean. If it doesn't feel slimy anymore. What else do we got? I got some more tools over here. Oh, I want to do these. I can't stand up. My leg just went creepy. That's all right. Um, let's clean this sucker off. Because it's all slimy. and covered in greasy, grimy fingerprints. And eventually, I got to frickin' fix my van. I think I know what's wrong with it. By full evaluation of, I got it to start the other day for about 10 seconds, and then it shut off again by spraying rubbing alcohol in there, so it's not getting fuel. It's like, it's not getting fuel. And then I thought about it. That van has one of those really loud electric fuel pumps that when you turn the key on that van, it won't let you go to start you can't just you know turn the key and go right to start it stops and you can hear the uh electric fuel pump wind up you can actually hear it go and start running and then you can turn the key all the way to start so i have a feeling the fuel pump's gone because it doesn't wind up anymore i don't hear the fuel pump because you can hear it i mean it's not stupid loud or anything but you can if you're listening for it, you can hear it. It's like a high pitch whine. And uh, it doesn't do the high pitch whine anymore. So I'm guessing the fuel pump is dead. Which really sucks because if I remember correctly, it's actually in the fuel tank. I mean, they got to drop the fuel tank which I'm not looking forward to. I love these. These are so much better than the regular channel locks. They have the little button when you push it, but which is actually kind of annoying. Um, but they're way, there's like 20 adjusters instead of four or five. They're way, way better. These are ones, I got a whole set. I bought the set of three or four or whatever it was. And then I lost one and had to buy, I think I just bought the single because this is probably, the one I lost is the one I use the most, of course. Which is this little one. I love this little puppy. And the handle on that's all slimy, too. So let's de-slime it. With some window cleaner. Look, it almost looks brand new again. That was all, like, black this morning. I'd actually already wiped this once before you guys started streaming. I got a polyurethane this table. I sprayed the table with Windex and orange clean. This is going to have to get Windex too because it's slimy. It's got that degreaser slime, the orange clean slime. And let's see, anything else over there? Yeah, there's all kinds of crap over there I need to clean. All my tools are slimed from stripping rust. Let's get... Ow! That hurt. I think this is it, though.
dad's old dead blow. This thing's been around for a long time. This is a sand filled dead blow. And although it doesn't move anymore, it used to go slush. <laughs> I think it's all congealed in there. But it needs a bath. The handle's all. This used to be like maple or something. It's all brown. <laughs> nasty. This has always been nasty, though. We use this on cars. But still get the top layer of slime off of it from PB Blaster. I use PB Blaster and the wire wheels to clean the rust off and wire brushes and just wire stuff. Sandpaper, PB Blaster, or um, WD 40. I actually like using the PB Blaster better for actual cleaning, but it's nastier to deal with. It doesn't dry as fast as the. makes a bigger mess. It's more slimy than WD 40 is. PB Blaster is nastier, which is why it works better, because it's actually something besides crap. Probably not the best thing to do on a wooden handle, but you know what? I don't care. This thing's ancient. I was going to say, I think my uncle gave this to my father before we moved into this house. I'm trying to remember if we use this on my bike in the old house, which means 69 or 70. <laughs> we moved into this house in 1970. Thanksgiving Day, 1970, we moved in. Much better. Less slimy. These aren't bad because they never hit the slimy stuff. They just took parts off in the beginning. These are nice, too. I bought these as a whim one day at uh, oh, uh, Home Depot. They're Huskies. Um, they were, like, on 50% off. I was thinking, ah, oh, I'll use them a half a dozen times and they'll just break. These things are awesome. I use this ratcheting thing all the time. I love the ratcheting box in. It is the bomb. For real. I mean, it really is, like, the best way to do it. I'm not going to hit it with a degreaser because these aren't that bad. The Windex should be enough. Everyone's leaving. There's only two people watching left. It says, oh, well, how long have I been streaming? 45 minutes, just cleaning tools and babbling. Babble! Then I got to put the bandsaw blade on. I have a new half-inch bandsaw blade. Because I've gone through a bunch of three-quarters, and I'm never happy with them. I actually had one I really, really liked, and then I destroyed it. And I thought I bought the same thing another time, and I didn't. It's actually the same brand, different blade. They're both three quarter inch blades, bandsaw blades. They both fit and everything, but one was a uh, alternating um, three four tooth and the other was an alternating two three tooth with uh, a thinner curve. And the thinner curve makes a big deal. Gets them much cleaner. And it's not just a thinner curve, the um, rack of the teeth. I don't know if you've ever seen a bandsaw blade, but they're actually just pieces of sheet metal and they stamp them out of it and sharpen the blades. They also bend the teeth out so they're, you know, they're not cutting straight. They're actually cutting at an angle, ripping through the board. Um, and the one I liked had a lower rake or whatever, whatever they call it. So the one I got now leaves deeper grooves, so I have to see their plane it or joint it more and you get a lot more waste and for what I'm doing I don't I mean it cuts faster but it doesn't cut as clean and I'm more worried about cutting clean because wood costs a lot of money this here stuff this purple heart <laughs> this this crap is expensive and it's actually not even that much more than black walnut almost the most expensive that's a little more expensive but Hardly at all. <laughs> like, it really isn't all that much more expensive. All right. We're all somewhat cleaned. Except for these things sitting here soaking. But they're going to soak. Soaking, 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 soaking. Stir it up a little. 
It used to be orange, now it's turning brown. <laughs> so that means it's working. Stir it up a little, mix it up. Get all the slimy, rusty crap out of them. So if I use them on something else, it's not just spreading slimy, rusty crap. Oops, stick that under there so I don't kick it over or something. And let's get the bandsaw over here. That thing right there. Oh, I got to stand in the hobble. It's on wheels. I can pull it right over to me. Let's see what I get up on my little rubber mat here. Looks like it will. Lock down the wheels. No spin wheel. So I can lock you. All right, locked. First things first is get the old blade out. Pull the leveling plug. So you guys can really see it. I gotta get thumb screws for this because it's having to get a screwdriver to do an adjustment every time is just annoying. Pull the guard off. Pull this old blade out. This is again, this isn't a terrible blade. It's just oh crap. I gotta pull the uh, insert out. Insert. And I really wish that would open more. And these things are like dangerously sharp. It actually isn't that old of a blade. It's basically a brand new blade. And get it the hell out of there. Let's go hang this up. This is another thing I don't like about this particular blade. I don't know if you can see that. There's like a kink right here in it. And it's not terrible, but it does make it wobble. And it came that way. I'm not too happy about it. And I think I can get it out by just bending it. But that's for another day. It's got a couple of them in it. It got crushed in shipping, I think. Or bent or something. I don't know. But for now, it gets hung up with all the other ones that I'm not using right now. And we will take this nice new one, which is only a half inch instead of a three quarter, which for ripping is not supposed to be as good, but everyone's saying with that, with this particular saw that's kind of small, they're like, you're probably better off with the small one anyways. I haven't used one of these brand of blades. This is a store brand blade from a mail order company that actually has a halfway decent reputation. I hate doing this because I always get hacked up. <laughs> I've seen people just throw these, but I don't like doing that. But they are for being crazy dangerous. <laughs> Because then things are sharp. That hurt. And I didn't cut myself, but it hurt. All right. And it goes this way. Move the teeth down. And I should just take the table off for now. I hate doing, but it does make the blade adjustment easier. And it all needs a bath anyways. So, out comes the table. This thing's kind of heavy. It's cast iron. And where's my vacuum? I'm going to have to run the vacuum for a minute, guys. It's going to get loud. Here comes the vacuum. Come on, straighten out. Cord. 
and we'll plug it in. I don't really need the extension for this. Again, I will mute myself for a second. What's up, Dandy Dan? Unmute. What is up, Dan? What is up, Vince? My other wheel went rolling away. Knob. My knob. My knob rolled away. All right. That's kind of gross. Clean up all the wheels, get any yucky yucks off, and I'm putting a new blade on. All the bearings roll smoothly. They seem to. I gotta get proper bearings for it. These are just cheap skate bearings I put on here, which you probably can't see because all the sunlight in the door and it's not focusing. But so I got bearing guides and they're all kind of, I put cheap because the original ones my brother had on it. Were the original ones, and it just sat in his um, garage at his house. And he used it, but he never really he didn't use it enough. And he didn't really take care of it properly. I mean, he, he, I shouldn't say that he did. He just spaced it a lot. He'd go out and make one cut, and he wasn't going to go through the whole thing and tune it like I do. Because you know, when I use it, I run a couple hundred feet of board through it he just run a board through it and this one has no kinks or dents or nothing which is really nice mm -hmm. and it's extremely sharp and it's hurting my damn thing dangles but i'm a dumbass and don't put gloves or anything on because you know i'm a dumbass <sighs> And it's on there, but something don't quite look right. Wait, I still have to adjust everything. You guys can't really see, but I gotta bring this up. No, and loosen my tension. I know it's way too tight. Do I have a big three quarter inch on here? It's too tight.
All right. Let's um do some adjusting and get all the uh, wheels out of the way. Get the wheels out of the way first. So it's kind of pointless to adjust the tension until they're out of the way because they're going to give you a false reading. Out of the way. Out of the way, not in the way. Out of the way. All right. Whoa. I don't know why he's going all the way back there. Come forward. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. All right. Let's see, I gotta go this way to get it centered. Now, I don't know if you know anything about bandsaw blades. And you really can't see it because it's all foggy. I wonder if it's actually the camera. Or it's just not focusing. Because all the sunlight. Probably some of both. But you have a gullet in the tooth, you know. Like any tooth, there's a actual tooth and then there's a loop to the next tooth. That's called the gullet. You didn't know already. And you don't actually center the blade on the center of the wheel. You center the gullet on the center of the wheel. Because that's where your cut is. That's where your pressure is. When you're cutting in front of the tooth and the gullet that does all the work, all this behind it is just guide. So Again, if you don't know how a bandsaw blade works, these wheels um, are domed so you can adjust the blade back and forth on that dome. And you want the blade on centered on that dome. You don't want it leaning forward or leaning back because it'll pop off when you put pressure on it. But what you do is, again, you set the... You want, like just like an eighth of an inch behind the gullet on the center of the wheels. Because that's where all the cutting pressure is and that's what keeps it balanced. So it's running nice and smooth. So, and it's pretty well centered on the gullet. The teeth are just slightly in front of the dome, which means they're not cutting into the because this is like a neoprene tire. So that's all good. And then we bring the back stop up until it just starts spinning and then you back it off an eighth of a turn. I don't know if you can hear that. Back it off until it just stops. I'll probably have to back it off more because every time I tighten it up, it moves forward. Yep, I'm hitting. No hits. All right, let's do this one next, which I make really hard to get to. Such a pain in the butt. I really want this to be a tool with changing blade system. I have to find a regular freaking Allen key for this one. I've done this before, I know I have. Um, I have the screwdriver kind right here somewhere. I'm going to get another one because neither one of these will fit. Of course, they're not in here where they belong. They just slip off the freaking internet router. Come on. This is 5 millimeter or 0.5. Actually, I think that takes a 5, doesn't it? I wonder if I can do it with the 4.5. Nope. Not taking the chance. What did I do with the 5 millimeter Allen key? I have a ball jointy one from uh, 
building this thing. These kind, screwdriver kind, but none of these are big enough. Yeah, no, that's not. I don't know what size it is. These actually came with the CNC. Open build supplies them. Oh, if you didn't hear, I posted my affiliate link. So if you want to buy any 3D printer or CNC parts, I'm having a sale right now. And I did that on my affiliate link on Twitter, which I don't often do. You know, I'm not big on all that affiliate crap. But, oh, uh, don't fall over, dumbass. But uh, they're having a decent sale. So, let's see, uh, buy two, get one free. 3.5, 3, 4, 5. I'm sure it's a 5, it might be a 4.5. <laughs> Might be a four or four point five. It is either a four or four point five. Where's the four? This is the four. These are regular, like you know, nappy and and I got the ratcheting Milwaukee here, which I absolutely love, both long and small, for just this kind of crap. And it's got to be a four point five. God damn it! I don't think I have a four point five in this kit. Wouldn't you know? 3.5? 3? Three, 4, 6. Oh, that's what I had out was a 6, huh? Not the 5. Where's the 5? I'm pretty sure it is a 5 that I need. It is a 5 I need. Where's my 5? By the way, um, this awesome holder for your impact drivers I have on both the small and the large, large, are on uh, printables.com and Thingiverse and pretty much everywhere I upload stuff. And, of course, the one I need, I don't have. Wouldn't you know it? Well, let's mosey on to a regular old set of Allen keys. Do you think I got enough Allen keys? Look, I have a whole set of Allen keys, too. I just should have gotten in the first place. But I was trying to be fancy. And yes, it's a five. So let's point this and spin this one and get the back guard in place. Until it just hits. And it's hitting. I don't know if you can hear that. So back it off a half a turn or eighth of a turn. Keep spinning. Hitting every once in a while, right on the weld, with the blade, back it off a little more, and we should be good. Which way am I going? That way. Okay, did it move forward when I tightened it? Nope. I still move it. I can just barely. Where you want it. I don't know if any of you guys have ever played with a bandsaw, but basically, you want all your bearings and guides to touch the band as it goes around when you spin it by hand, and then you back it off just that little bit so it's not actually touching when it goes around. You gotta get it really, really close. Because you don't want it moving when you're cutting, but you don't want to hit it when it's just free rolling. I know it's weird. It's a very weird thing. It's 
kind of hard to adjust this one. Not my favorite thing in the world to do. Can you guys hear that in the mic? I'm going to move back because we're actually hitting crap. That's going to change everything. Oh, come here, you. We're hitting an at the gullet. Bigger. Bigger is always better. I need to make these all toolless. I got to get some screw ones. And again, you want these wheels just behind the gullet because you don't want them actually hitting the teeth. The teeth alternate. And you don't want them hitting the teeth because then they'll screw up the teeth. Cut my fingers off while I'm spinning it. There's got to be a wobble in this. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's in this wheel. I thought I chewed them all up, but. There's got to be, because it just keeps hitting it. You need to, like, i got to change these. Everything's different. They're all different sizes. Every screw on this has a different size of Allen key it needs. And it's kind of obnoxious. You need, like, four different Allen keys to just adjust the bearings. And I just moved it over, didn't it? Somewhere it's hidden. Right there on the weld. Back it off to that magical smidge. This thing tight. Ooh, that would help. Then the whole head bobble. Good. And I did. And it's awesome. All right. Let's do the lowers. They have to be moved back also. This whole thing like bobbles when you're moving it around. Not very secure, unfortunately. It looks like there's something behind this one because it's not seating all the way. And there is, there's junk behind it. Come on, let go. And these are just eccentric. They're on like eccentric holders. Just like on a, the wheels on a 3D printer, basically. And I think that's pretty damn good. I'd like to tighten that one up if I can. I don't know if it'll hit or not. We're going to find out. Not. Nah. One thing go even closer. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try. Actually, this one can. We should just do it at the weld because that's the wide spot. Where's the weld? Come on, little weld, where are you? Right there. So if I bring it in at the weld, which is the only expansion part.
just touching a little too much. I think I got it. Tighten everything up. Make sure I got it. It's actually looking like it should go back more. It's still not going all the way back. An issue. Because then it's not lined up to the gullet properly. Hey, you want to see what I'm playing with? It's a Barry support. It's pretty cool, actually. Viking! Mr. Pool! Crazy somebody. Oh, can somebody kill that crazy cadet frickin' dude that's just a spammer, please? I know one of you guys are modded. can do that. Because I'm on my little laptop and it won't let me do it. I mean, I can. It just takes forever. Being there. Sparing's not too smooth running. But smooth is kind of tight feeling, though. Why is that not going all the way back? What? It's holding it up. I'll just bring it back just a hair more. Because it's still hitting the gun. This way. Hope it moves around every time you adjust them. It's kind of obnoxious. I'm hearing one little tiny hit somewhere. But I may not have this all the way tensioned either. I got it way under tension. So I think I'm good. Good enough, anyways. Not much wobble in there. A little bit. I would like it a little closer, but not going to happen. Maybe I will. Let's see if I can get the top a little closer. Then I tighten this up, it's gonna freaking move, isn't it? Nope. Eh, it's a little better. I'm hitting somewhere. But it's only like one to the great way. Wow. As I think, if I give it some tension now, that'll straighten that out. Oh, got one little spot I'm hitting. I think I'm gonna leave it for now. I don't see a bearing spinning. This one. I can't see a bearing spinning. Welcome to doing a bandsaw. There's guys that do this way faster than I do. I'm not the greatest at doing this. And uh, this isn't the easiest bandsaw to do it on either. Is it hitting now? I hear it hitting somewhere. I just can't see anywhere it's hitting. Maybe this one. That was the one. I don't know. It's still hitting somewhere. Where the frick is it hitting? I don't see a one that it could be hitting on. Oh, this one. Well, 
That was the one. No, I still hear it a little bit. So minor, I'm not going to freaking deal with any more of it. Now the fun part, I'm going to get the table back on, which is a real pain in the ass. No. Actually, I guess there's more people here now than there was 10 minutes ago. There's only like two or three people here 10 minutes ago. Oh, crap. This is a major pain in the butt. Because it just doesn't go on there well with the guard guide. I gotta figure out a way. These things these things here are kind of obnoxious. This is a pivot for the table and all that. But it actually holds it down. Problem is is they sink inside so they don't stick out far enough to like hold it in place. I'm thinking I'm gonna three D print like a little stop that goes in behind here. And just make it out of like TPU so it's movable. It's semi flexible, but it won't, uh, but it'll hold it. Because getting this in here without damaging anything is a major cluster. Fuck. Without screwing up the blade and then lining up those. getting them dropped because you can't put it down because then they won't drop through. They're kind of obnoxious. There's no way to hold them. There's one, there's two. Now i got to find a way. Here's the thing. When I go to screw this on and I try and push up on it, it just slides up inside. There's no real way to hold it, so you just got to gingerly start it on it. And hope you don't push it up. Oh, I got that one. Let's see if I can get this one. You know, pushing it up inside and losing it. I got it. It's unusual. Make sure it's all centered on there. And then tighten her up. And then I gotta make sure it's square. Put the guard back in. I don't know if you guys saw the uh, blade I twisted. I posted on everywhere not too long ago. Um, it's because I 3D printed the frickin' um, little spacer guard thing there, and uh, it broke. Don't 3D print these. They're just not thick enough to be plastic. They are way too thin. Let's fire it up and see what happens. That sounds pretty good. Let's see if I got the table square. I need like a piece of two by four. No, I don't think it is right now. Down more. It looks it. Might have to adjust the stop. Do 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 do. do. does roll forever. I need a break. Right. But I would say I'm pretty darn close to square because that fits right in there. So that's good. 
I mean, I don't know if you saw what I did because the fence is in the way. But if you feed a board in, as tall as you can get, I got a two by four, it's tall enough. Cut a little notch, flip it over, go to the back and try and feed it through the back. If you have to lean it one way or another, pitch it, which again, you really can't see what I'm doing because the guard's in the way, but oh look, I can roll this thing. What am I doing? I can roll this so you can see. Sort of anyways. You have to roll it one way or another. You're not square, but if it just sits on the table and slides in, the table square to the blade. Pretty easy, though. All right. Let's put these all away. I don't need those no more. My chair's rolling away. Come back. Run away, chair. Uh, where's the album key that bongs in here? It's right here. That goes there. These go up here. All in order and organized, sort of. See if I can resaw something. You know what? I can resaw this little scrap piece of two by four. I've already started resawing. How's that? up if you ever saw the picture with the board in there and the blade all bent and scared the ever living crap out of me um when it came to a screeching halt it uh it was a beautiful blade but it ain't no more but anyway that blade is now in there detention it so it doesn't get all screwy and roll her back to where she belongs. And there we go. Oh, I gotta put the guard back on it. Must put the guard back on it, because you know, a lot of times I don't worry about guards and stuff, but ever since that freaking blade got jammed in there, because I used that plastic piece of crap um, insert that I 3D printed, I, uh, I worry about that now. <laughs> I worry about things like that now, because that scared the crap out of me. That was probably the scariest thing I've ever done on a, with a tool like that. Something has scared me as much. Okay over here and put all these tools away this gets hung right here and this gets hung right here and this gets hung right here and these probably need to be charged oh that's fully charged no one's got a wonder on it all right i gotta move these too close Beep. This goes over here, right there, and this goes right here, which you can't see. And these all go with the mechanical tools. 
because I don't use those that much. And this goes right here. Ooh, I forgot I got these. We can chit chat about these for a second. This. Well, that camera's like way over on the side of this. That's so bizarre. Like, center of the camera is right here. That should be touching the camera. That's how far. That's weird. Okay, it's looking to the side. It's a sideways looking camera. Um, these are magnets. Little black eight millimeter neodymium, supposedly there's neodymium magnet. They're cheapos off of Amazon, so I'm not sure they're neodymium. <laughs> Refrigerator magnets, billboards, hobbies, offices. Well, I'm going to make a um, blade setting guide for the jointer with them because I had one and it sucked. And the magnet sucked and it put marks in my blade because it was made of some kind of cheap metal so it not you know it niched the blade every time I tried to use it which is a pain in the ass with that joiner and uh, so I'm going to use some scraps of the hardwood and you basically well I can sort of show you there's a jointer get the window out of the way when you adjust the blades on this you basically magnet down Hey, come back here. You level the blades to that. So you overhang them. You have something holding this down, magnet. You bring this up to top dead center, which really isn't necessary. Um, as long as they're all the same, it's always in the same position. But if you have a magnet one here that's made out of like wood or plastic or something soft, the magnets will pull the blade up to the gauge, the guide. Like if you take this, and I put a couple three magnets here on this face. So if it was this way, there'd be like three magnets here holding it to that back bed. And one magnet right here, or two magnets stacked together so it's nice and strong, will suck the blade up into it. What you do is you inset the magnet just a hair below the wood so the blade actually hits the wood. And that sets your perfect height to that table. Now, you go through and you do all three blades, and that way they're all the same height. I'm not so worried about it being at top dead center because my outfeed table is adjustable. So if it's a little too high or a little too low, I can adjust the outfeed table to the blades. A lot of them have a stationary outfeed table, and you have to find top dead center of the blade to set it because otherwise it's screwed up. But yeah, that's my next thing to do. And then something else I've been working on is, <laughs> know what these are? These are cribbage board pins. And they're all metal. And I'm gonna try and make cribbage boards on the CNC with some scrap material. And I got a bunch of stuff here I can't really use on anything because it's got knots or crap in it. And, I think I can seam them together and make bigger boards out of scraps, kind of like I do with my cutting boards, but all the scraps I can't use for my cutting boards because they got knots and crap in them. And then put it on the CNC and cut a cribbage board out of it. You'd never know that thing. This bandsaw is actually about five years older than that miter box. <laughs> and that's old. This is a 2001, I think, bandsaw. My brother bought it brand new off of them at their 30th anniversary. It's their 30th anniversary edition, which is just like all the other ones. They just painted it black and they added like the fence and a couple of accessories for the same price that year. Um, that I bought when the guys that I was working with me, that's when I quit my other job at 2000. Let's see. When did I quit working corporate? Like 2010, 2008, something like that. Um, literally that week I bought this because my brand new freaking Makita, which I shouldn't say brand new, it was only it was only a year or two old. I absolutely love that Makita 1013. 
Um, it was fairly new. It was like a thousand dollar mega box. And the company I was working for fucking said, "Oh, just use the guy. Let the guys use your chop box. They forget out yours." Yeah, so I'm like, "All right." Well, they put it on the stand and forgot to lock it. The stand is on now, <laughs> and they forgot to lock it. So the first guy goes to cut, pushes it back, and the whole table saw falls on the ground and shatters. Thousand dollar miter box, not table saw miter box. And uh, I was like, "Somebody's got to pay for that." They're like, no, it's your responsibility. You should you should have checked it. I'm like, they borrowed my saws, and nobody's going to pay for it. And the corporate's like, well, we can't make them. They're just subcontractors. We're like, this is a, what? Anyway, needless to say, a week later, I quit. <laughs> yeah, I was tired of playing. The company I started working for was the same company, but got bought four or five times in the course of the last year I worked there. I worked there almost 10 years. It was a great job when it was just us. Um, the, the original owner um, wanted to retire, so he sold the company, and then that company sold to another company, and then subdivided the framing and trim, because we used to be all one, I used to do some framing and some trim, and subdivided us. I stayed with the trimming and cabinetry segment, and they got resold again, and by the time the last so the purchaser purchased it, it was just a cluster of idiots. I was like, it was, they were morons. They basically bought us because we were always bidding against them and way under them and getting all the jobs they wanted. They were like, well, instead of competing with you anymore, we're just going to buy you up, <laughs> which is whatever. That's fine. But they started screwing with us. And we're like, we were cheaper and making money because of the way we did things. And now you're making us do it your way which is why you're more expensive and you aren't going to make money. I was making them when I was working on Long Island, I took it over. They were making about three to $5,000 a month. The company was off the jobs. And after less than a year there, they were making about 50 grand a month. And I guess my aunt's here. I'm going to have to go. Um, and then that company took it over and it dropped down within like two months to like 30. And then that pretty much finished. And I went to another job and they were only making like two or three. And they're like, why are you losing this money? I'm like, because you guys are idiots. So you're making me go through hoops that I shouldn't have to go through. The whole point of me being on that job is to not do those hoops. You know, I, I had 200 guys on Long Island when they took over, when this new company took over for the first week. And I literally had to call some 18-year-old kid in Milwaukee to clarify going and buying a box of nails on the company credit card. Now, the company gave me a credit card, $5,000 limit on it. I could go get what I want. Now, $5,000 sounds like a lot, but when you have two, three, four hundred guys working on you and four or five different job sites and, you know, five or six of those, are crew, you know, different crews, $5,000 in a day is not that much. <laughs> You know, a box of nails. When I buy a box of nails, I don't buy a little box of nails like homers do. I buy a case or a pallet of nails, you know. So I was like, I got to call this guy. So I had 200 guys one day standing around twiddling their thumbs because the nails never showed up. Then I ordered two weeks before. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to Home Depot and just buy them. You know, I'll get a small box or two just to hold this over. And they wouldn't let the credit card go through because I had to call and get it verified first from the main office. Well, my guy started at 7 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. This kid, 18-year-old kid, and I'm pretty sure they were in Milwaukee somewhere, doesn't start till 9 o'clock, and they're, what, two hours behind us. So it was almost noon before I could even verify. It was like 1 o'clock before I got my box of mail. And I got 200 guys doing this. All getting paid. <laughs> I mean, they were doing stuff, but they weren't. I I kept them busy. They, they were doing things, but they weren't doing production. They weren't really making us money. And they're like, well, you could have just bought them yourself, and then we reimbursed you. <laughs> no. You're making me jump through all these hoops, and you think I'm going to go out and buy a box of nails 
and had to give you the option to refuse it, saying, oh, you didn't need those. You already ordered those, which I had already ordered them. <laughs> they just never came. They never shipped them. So they had to order them through them instead of just ordering them from our local whatever. It just got to be stupid. Anyways, I'm going to kill the stream because I think my aunt's here or some friends or something. I got to go deal with people. I don't like people. I don't like dealing with people. I want all the people to go away. People need to go away. They all need to go away. Anyway, you all have fun. Band saw it's got a band. Tools are clean. It's been a productive morning. You all have fun.